Hello and welcome everybody. The Samurai is one of the most popular and efficient starter classes in Elden Ring. I will show you three deadly and powerful Samurai themed builds, how to start them right at the beginning of the game, how to progress through the mid game and how you achieve a powerful end game setup. Each build centers around one main theme while also providing different weapon and skill options you can choose from. In addition, each build has very powerful attacks in melee and ranged combat while keeping sorceries or incantations completely optional. They are not mandatory for any of these builds. We kick this off with the general recommended starting path that is the same for every build variant. Most people will know this stuff by now, so I will keep this short, or you hop to the next timestamp of this video. After the little tutorial, you unlock the Sight of Grace, the first step. You head north and unlock the Church of Ellie and progress further north until you unlock Gatefront Ruins. Here you rest, receive Torrent, quick travel back to the Church of Ellie, speak with Rani and be rewarded with your first Spirit Ash, the Lone Wolf Ashes, which despite its name, summons a small pack of three wolves. Optional, but very useful, make a small detour to the southern coastline and collect the goat pickled fowl foot here. This item gives you 30% increased runes for three minutes. Keep that in mind for our next step. Now it's travel time and this will lead you to two tasks that will greatly increase your early game potential. If you want a more demanding early game challenge, you can totally skip this section and head right into the specific builds, but the outcome of this trip is very beneficial. You make your way to the third church of America, unlock every site of grace on the way and you can also start Kenneth Hyde's questline. Use this teleporter and unlock the bestial sanctum site of grace. Time for your first task. This is the trickier one and might take a few tries. I certainly always need more than one. But the item at the end is one of the best damage reduction and early game talismans that will reduce physical damage by 10%. You can see me jumping down to the lower levels of the bestial sanctum and believe me, this is not my first attempt. But I also show you the picture from the wiki. You can find the related link in the video description. After this little ordeal and honing your riding skill with torrent and cursing his wonky movements, we travel south unlock more sites of grace, avoid any fights along the way and finally arrive at 4th Feroth for our 70,000 rune boost or 90,000 if you picked up the gold pickled foul foot. Get to your gruesome work to relieve Elder Dragon Grey Roll from its painful existence. Lucky for us, we have a bleed weapon which will shorten the process significantly. Remember to use the golden foot towards the end, otherwise the 3 minute buff will run out before you are done. How you spend your runes depends on the road you choose from here. Definitely invest into vigor and your main damage stats. More information on that in the specific build sections, which is exactly where we will continue right now. First we have the magic infused samurai. That doesn't need a single spell to be absolutely deadly in melee and at medium range. This samurai starts the early game with its Uchi Katana that holds a frosty surprise, but also learned to master a deadly spear equipped with one of the most powerful ashes of war in the game. Around level 50 we gain access to the infamous Moon Veil Katana, which serves as your trusty companion throughout the whole journey. The magic horn bow gives you another cheap ranged option for minor foes if you don't want to lean into sorcery, which you can totally do to create one of the deadliest spell melee combinations in the game. This samurai starts by collecting easy to grab ashes of war that you can pick up without a real fight. We bypass Stormwell Castle and make our way to the Sword Dance Ash of War. At the moment we cannot infuse it with magic or frost, so we head further north and collect Hoarfrost Stomp from this invisible bug. Your very first Ash of War, Ground Stomp, comes in handy here. Now you can level up or use your Grey Roll runes to do that and upgrade your Uchi Katana a bit. The next thing on the menu is the incredible powerful Ice Spear skill, for which we need to kill a certain Black Knight. Try to stay on his left side to avoid some of his attacks. Use Hoarfrost Stump frequently and collect your reward. The Clayman's Harpoon, which you can farm easily right from the start, 
is the natural weapon choice for this Ash of War. The Cross Naginata that you will collect around level 50 together with your Moon Whale is a very good alternative with a nice moveset and natural bleed buildup. In the mid game you switch the Uchi Katana for the Moon Whale, but you can keep the Nagakiba or the Uchi Katana with Sword Dance set to the Frost Affinity or Hawfrost Stomp as an alternative if you get tired of the Moon Whale, which is an incredible powerful weapon. The Hornbow serves as your cheap and long range option to kill smaller enemies or weaken bigger targets. Ice Spear can kill every boss from a rather safe distance or you stick with the Moon Whale weapon art, Transient Moonlight. The Nagakiba is a powerful and flexible melee option that you can use with any Ash of War that you like. In the late game we collect the Ronin armor and buff it up with some heavier pieces to reach 51 poise. Apart from that, nothing really changes for the late game with this setup. Here are the stats and talismans for level 50, level 100 and level 150. Vigor and Mind are always up to your personal choice. Some prefer more HP, some more FP. Endurance needs to be just high enough to achieve a medium roll and carry your weapons. I prefer Bow, Spear and Katana. But the Bow is kind of optional because we have ranged attacks with the other weapons. But Mighty Shot is very cheap and has an exceptional range. I would stick with the Claimant's Harpoon over the Cross Naginata to save some weight and thus endurance. I only really use it for Ice Spear. The build is a little demanding in terms of stat spread, but if you drop one weapon or stick with a lighter armor, you can always free some additional points from endurance. The second variant is the Faith Samurai, that you can play centered around holy or fire damage. Especially in the late game, it is very handy to be able to switch to fire damage, because a lot of bosses become resistant to holy damage. In the early game, we immediately collect Sacred Blade as our main Ash of War, that serves as a mid-range option and is buffing our melee damage with the Uchi Kadana. Also, we stick with Faith as our main damage stat. No need to invest into dexterity other than meeting weapon requirements. Stormwell Castle holds a few valuable items for us, so we want to progress through it early on. You should buy very powerful flame arrows from this merchant for your starter bow, a very beneficial investment in the early game. Within Stormwell Castle we find the Godslayer seal and the very powerful Black Flame incantation. The use of incantations is optional, but the faith-centered build benefits the most from using them. In the early game it is no problem to mix up holy and fire damage. Later you may want to focus on one damage type. The Sacred Scorpion Charm can also be acquired very early on, favoring a holy damage setup in the early game. In the mid game you have the option to swap the Uchi Katana for the Nagakiba, but that is up to you. The damage is nearly identical, but the additional reach of the Nagakiba is very nice. You could also swap to the Cross Naginata if you want a different weapon type. It fits the theme, has a very nice moveset and bleed build up like the katanas. Your best ashes of war are Sword Dance set to the Flame or Holy Affinity, Sacred Blade, Flaming Strike or the mighty Phantom Slash if you use the Cross Naginata. All very powerful choices and thus giving you the opportunity to switch between these skills to keep the gameplay fresh. Later in the mid game you also find the Earth Tree Bow if you want to keep a bow in your arsenal. As incantations you can use Golden Vow and Blessings Boon as an active buff and heal over time. Additionally you have access to Flame Grant Me Strength for your fire setup. The Faith setup with either Holy or Fire damage is maybe the most flexible and versatile Samurai setup. You can swap between a lot of Ashes of War, only need to focus on one damage set, thus being less demanding and you gain access to very powerful buffs, heals and damage incantations, always ready in your offhand without weapon switching. A bow and a melee weapon in your main hand providing you with an answer to everything, like killing pesky birds from a distance with mighty shot. Towards the end game, you collect again the Ronin armor and bring it to 51 poise with some heavier gauntlets and greaves. The black blade incantation is a very powerful opener for boss fights or you can toss in the blade of calling or the black knife for some devastating ranged attacks in boss fights, where the bow is often rather useless. 
Here are your stats and talismans for level 50, level 100 and level 150. We are focusing on faith, thus leaving more room for vigor and mind opposed to the intelligence variant. Overall, it is the most versatile and adaptive samurai themed setting from this video. And you can pick up all early game items very easily. Feel free to pause the video here to take a deeper look at the numbers and talismans. In the final setup we fully embrace a bleed and arcane centered setup with some of the coolest weapons available in the game. This samurai can also spice things up with some nasty dragon incantations for the extra push in difficult situations. At the beginning you follow Kenneth Hyde's questline and kill the knight at the top of his castle. This rewards us with Bloody Slash, a very powerful early game skill. Don't forget to also collect the recipe for blood grease here. Put this on your Uchi Katana and invest some points in Arcane alongside Dexterity. Again buy some flame arrows to keep your starter bow deadly throughout the early game and collect the Dragon Communion Seal by pushing through the first half of Fringe Folk's Hero's Grave. Don't worry, once you get the hang of it you can really rush to the location and the fight is not that hard. If you have killed Grey Roll, then you have already access to various Dragon Breath spells. Especially the Rotten Breath skill is very useful in boss fights, although it was slightly nerfed recently. But in general, this is optional, because you then need to invest some points into faith, which will spread your stats and might not be something you want or need to do in the early game. You can totally stick to your bow and bloody slash for now and save the dragon communion incantations for the mid or late game. In the mid game you will get access to the incredible twin blade Eleanor's pole blade. This thing is super powerful in applying bleed with its rapidly hitting weapon art that also has a very useful follow up to get you out of harm's way. After you reach the black wet blade, a double uchi katana setup which can be set both to bleed or one to bleed and one to frost is also a nice mid game variant. A cross naginata with bloody slash or phantom slash set to the bleed affinity is also possible. And finally in the end game you again collect the Ronin's armor but much more important you lay your hands on the infamous river of blood, maybe the best bleed weapon in the game. You can also collect swarm of flies which is still a very powerful bleed incantation. For bleed resistant enemies you could keep the regalia of echo aid and the dragon communion incantations ready. Here are your stats and talismans for level 50, 100 and 150. Overall a more focused build centered around bleed build up that sometimes has to deal with bleed resistant enemies. For these occasions you might want to keep a backup as described before. But bleed is overall one of the strongest abilities in the game and you have access to some of the best and coolest weapons. You can always change the talismans according to your playstyle, maybe focusing on buffs after applying bleed, buffing attack power through rapid attacks or a dual wield setup with buffed jump attacks or a mixture of these styles. All of these samurai builds are fun to play, start very powerful early in the game and remain deadly through your whole playthrough and in NG plus or beyond. Which build do you prefer or do you have other builds you would like to see covered in the future? Let us know in the comments. For now this is all about Elden Ring. Take good care of yourself and enjoy your journeys in the lands beyond.